Hello and welcome to the Big Baby Daddy Cast. My name is Manny Santiago. I'm here with the three amigos. What's up, guys? What's going on, What's man? It's Josh Vasquez. What up? It's Gio. What's up? It's Jay. Hey, and uh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the episode. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, how are you guys doing? What's uh, what's been going on with you? What uh, uh, what are you guys playing right now? Well, just want to remind everybody that this is the Big Baby Daddy Cast. This is episode eleven. It is February ish. ish. <laughs> it's, it's a date, and and it is a time in February. Uh, yeah. No. Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, I've been playing a lot of different games lately. It's weird. I've have had a, a couple to- uh, a lot of time on my hands to play. Uh, let's see. We've played Tharsis, which is we'll get into it's a video on the site. I've played Galaxy on Steam. It's a PC Mac game. I've been playing a little bit more of Killer Instinct. I keep going back to that game. Um, I don't know what it is. I, just, I, I, I like that's the only fighting game that I can continue to go back to is, is Killer Instinct for Xbox One. Um, outside of that, not much. I mean, I still have uh, Fallout 4 just screaming at me <laughs> from inside the drawer. Uh, I, I still have Tomb Raider sitting there waiting for me to, 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 to pop that in. And that's pretty, much, that's pretty much what I'm playing so far. What about you? Gio, what uh, what are you playing right now? Well, lately I've been playing, I've been having uh the Halo fetish, so I've been playing a lot of Halo Five. Um, I just recently finally finished playing the the, the storyline and beat it. So now I'm just playing the multiplayer, just pretty much nonstop. You know, I was thinking about it the other day playing Fallout Four. It's just like I'm like, oh, I don't want to fucking have to sit there and figure out where the hell I'm at, where I gotta go, like, so. But I think sometime this week I'm gonna get back into Halo, um, Fallout Four, and you know, continue on the journey. What a what a first world problem that we have in our hands. What about it is it's 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 a it's a, it's a detriment to society. <laughs> we middle 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 aged uh, uh, middle class people don't have time to play vi- video games. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with you, Josh Sims? What's up? Uh nothing much. Uh, basically. You know, other than moving and whatnot, you know, I've been, I just finally beat, you know, Black Ops 3 finally. And I've been switching back and forth between uh, Dying Light and probably going to be playing GTA in a little while. But I like Dying Light. It's, how, how that going uh, believe it or not, it's actually not bad. I haven't played with anybody online yet, but I was going to try that in a little while and see if I can actually get a group together. Is it like a first person shooter or is it like a. Explain it. Yeah, way. it's a yeah, it's a first person. Um, it's it it it's kind of like how Call of Duty Zombies is, but you know, you the main goal from it is actually just you know do the inject do the objective objective that they have, and <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and so it's slightly you know it's slightly different. I heard like I heard that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Objectives. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Forget it. All right, all right. Well, you know. Wait, wait, wait. No, okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. I got this. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. I got this. Take a deep breath. So I heard that game. You know, it has parkour. You could climb up buildings. Yeah. You could, like, okay. Is it true that? When it gets nighttime in that game, that it's basically it's not basically like it's unplayable, but it's like you don't want to be outside. You can't you, you can't see a damn thing. Uh, that's was, why they the that's why they even tell you. Up. I'm sorry. That's why they even tell you at night. Uh, the the people you know the NPCs in the game they actually tell you try not to go out at night unless okay. it's actually set up for that type of mission. But yeah, you can't see shit at at night in the game. So th- those that's from the same people that made Dead Island, right? I believe so, yes. Okay. Does it play the same? Is it in the same vein? Can you, like, make weapons? Do you level up? Uh, you, yeah, you, you level up. You got... There's actually three things you level up. You level up um, your 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 strength, agility, and then something else. I can't remember what the third one was at right, right now. Um, but, yeah, and it's actually broken down into... E- each thing is has, like, an, like, strength. Oh, the third one was weapons, sorry. 
the uh, each one has another twenty brackets in, and you can unlock you know it you know uh, a stronger hit. You could do like a power slide, uh, dolphin slide. I think that was in there too, but yeah, it was actually you can actually. There's a lot of shit you can unlock in that. So that, that game is a game that you, you can easily spend like 30, 40 hours playing. Yeah, I've, shit. I've, I think I've already got at least eight hours already. Okay. Okay, so uh, th- when you when you bought the game, did it come, like, did you bought the version that uh, came out recently that I think brings uh, some more content? or Because I know that they were updating that game with some DLC. Yeah, the, uh, I'm sorry I don't have any decent info on it uh i had a friend of mine actually got me hooked on that got me turned on to the game uh as far as like any type of dlc content i know they were supposed to drop one last week i just haven't updated because of the move okay okay so you're playing how it originally came out with thank you right (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh i've been before we before we go on i want to i gotta get something off my brain jesus christ man oh god Objective. Yeah, no, I gotta, I, it's coming. We, it's coming. Yeah, no, we 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 kind of just like jumped right into it, and I'm so used to us having like a little powwow right before. So I want to talk about something very serious. <clears throat> is it hugs? It is not hugs. <laughs> Doc McStuffins. <laughs> what? Okay. Really? I talk about, no, I want to. I want to. Serious. I want to talk about Doc McStuffins. All right. Okay, so can, you, can, that, can, you, can you enlighten us with what Doc McStuffins is? Yes. So, I'm a dad. No shit. Really? <laughs> uh, I watch dad shows with the baby. Baby baby dad shows, whatever. The big baby daddy shows. Um, Doc McStuffins is fucked up. i tell you why, all right? So, she's, you know, Doc McStuffins. I'm Doc McStuffins. I don't know the fucking song. Anyway. You sang it the other day. <laughs> This yeah right. <laughs> this child has severe psychological problems. Okay, she has amassed an army of toys to do her bidding. Right, she goes in there. She she says she talks to them. Everybody's having Lambi and the, the stupid freaking dragon and the angry knight or whatever. Right, they always have something wrong with them. So she fixes them. Right, she fixes. Oh, a stuffing is coming out. I stuffed that up. Oh, my leg's broken, so I'm going to fix it. Oh, I'm going to put a Band-Aid over it, even though they don't have flesh. Anyway, so she, she's talking to these toys that she's just amassing, like an army of toys. She has a bunch of them. She has a hippo. She has, like, airplanes and shit, and they all, ha- they all come to her. They all come to her. She's the healer of the pack, right? She's like, she's like the witch the, doctor. Uh, she's like, yeah, she's the <laughs> witch doctor, and I figured it out. She's suffering from severe mental trauma, right? Because her, her brother, that little fuck that keeps on breaking all his toys and then gives it to her like, oh, I broke my toy. And then he just goes away. Like, he doesn't stick around to figure Nobody's asking her how she's fixing these toys. She just goes off and, okay, let me tell you what happened. The brother died, right? Tragic accident. This is, this is my theory, right? The brother died. Tragic, it's, it's, it's sad, you know, the brother died. So she just completely just fucking got messed up about it. Where's the dad? The dad was, you know, he's around, but it's always the mom. The mom is a doctor, right? Doctor, mixed stuffins. They named her kid Doc stuff. It's fucked up, right? It's fucked up. So she <laughs> said, okay, well, my, my brother died. My parents don't watch. Where are the parents? They're never around. She's always in that stupid <laughs> little hut with the little toys. Why That's that? how That's... most of the kids' shows are. They never show the parents. Don't interrupt me. I'm on some <laughs> shit here. You got to listen to this. This is serious. So she has all these toys. These toys come to life. She, Doc McStuffins is trying to kill her family. We need to look, look. Look, we need to write to Disney, and we need to tell them to take Doc McStuffins off the air. Why? I'll tell you why. It's teaching kids to talk to their toys, and to fucking mass an army of toys that are gonna take over the world. Doc McStuffins is the enemy. She's the enemy. Who names their kid Doc? It's a first of all, it's a girl. That's number one. Number two, fucking shit. That's the point. Doc McStuffins <laughs> is a. Hard, it, so so it's the show so bad that you have to come up with this explanation to make it like some background story to keep yourself entertained as you're watching through it. I yes. wonder what you have to say about Bubble Guppies. Oh God. Don't get started on Bubble Okay, oh, okay Bubble Guppies? Oh, why? 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 Where are the genitals? Where do they pee? 
How do they go to the bathroom? <laughs> what they unzip their fucking fin? Like, how does that That's work? your concern? Where's our genitals? You gotta oh oh it's time to go outside. It's, it's time to go outside. It's everybody let's go outside. And then it's like, all right, well, what time is it? Well, duh, it's time for lunch. It's time for lunch every day when you say it's time for lunch. They gotta sing about it. Right? They gotta sing about it. Oh, it's time for lunch. It's time for lunch. And it's like, oh, let's go outside. Like, all right, we're gonna go outside. Fine. We'll fucking do this every day, dude. All I'm saying is Doc McStuffins is a murderer <laughs> and the bubble guppies are androgynous. You can continue. All right. Thank so uh, just now away. that now that we sunk a lot of time <laughs> into talking about Doc McStuffin, <laughs> that brings me to my next topic. I'm going to transition this, and I'm going to make it work on our nostalgia session. Uh, what games have we played that have been the biggest time sinks for us? Um, and, you know, it, there's a lot of games out there that pretty much take a long time to beat, but sometimes you don't have to have a long game to continue playing it for a long time. Uh, for example, GTA V can only run you for the uh, the story about ten hours, but you know somebody like Josh Sims seems to be playing it for an ungodly amount of hours. So, Josh Sims, what's your biggest time sink that you oh, can God. remember that you've played? Uh, offhand, I know my hours played on it from the 360 and it carried over. I think I got at least well over 200 hours no, no, played no, no, on no, it. No, 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 no. But within no, a day? No, 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 no. You bought that game fucking twice. You bought the game and then you bought it again. That's not That's what I said. You said I, it carried over. There's no carry over. There's I bought the game once and then I bought it again. It's like, "Oh, I like these shoes. Let me buy these shoes again." <laughs> anyway, Yes, I did buy it for the 360. <laughs> and then I bought it for the Xbox One because your stuff carried over. So when the Xbox Two comes out, you're going to buy it again, right? <laughs> no, that'll be, a, that'll be GTA 6 that come out by then. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, it, what was it about GTA that makes you come back and default back to it? You know, because everybody has a game that they default to uh, that they come back to. Like, you know, maybe I'm playing another game. And then say, okay, I'm sick of this. I'm going to go back to GTA because this is just fun. Or while I, I make a decision and want to play, I'm going to go back to I GTA. Think, I think you just answered your question because, I mean, it's fun. There's something in it the is, game that, like, you know, you can't probably get anywhere else. You know, like, well, like I said, I, you know, I'll, I'll bounce around from, like, Call of Duty, Halo, and all that. And then, like, if we have a, you know, like, the crew that I started, you know, everybody's like, Oh shit! Well, let's get a let you know. Let's get a big group on with GTA. Sometimes we'll do like the highest, or sometimes we'll just do like races, or we'll just fuck around and kill each other. So the majority of your time spent in that game is mainly the multiplayer, correct? Yeah. Yeah. If let me ask you a question: If that game didn't have a multiplayer component, do you think you'd still go back to it? Probably not, because even like when uh, San Andreas and all that came out, I played it, I beat it. Very seldomly that I go back to it afterwards. On uh, I mean, if I did, it was mostly out of boredom because I already beat everything else already. So, so basically, this game makes it for you for, because your friends are on it, and you guys uh, kind of—that's the way you guys spend time. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna go right. to GTA, and I'm gonna blow up your car because you're winning in this race. So, <laughs> now, now if we have to—if we blow up the car, then you have to pay for it. So, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so and a lot of our guy, a lot of our people, a lot of our crews, we have like some high-end cars, and I'm not paying. Nine hundred thousand for a damn car that we all have. You know, I kind of miss that from Red Dead Redemption. I loved like calling one of my friends out. It's like, "Hey, uh, Jimmy," and he's like, "What?" Boom! Shot your horse, and then like <laughs> take off. <laughs> I love doing that shit. So I, I can understand uh, just the the stupid stuff you guys can do to have fun. What about you, Gio? What's going on with you? What uh, what has been your biggest time sink that you can remember? I'm gonna have to say it was Shemu. Um. I used to, I grew up playing on that game, and it, it, it took me forever because it felt like I had to talk to everybody or if I had, like, I talked to one person or if I had to do something. Unfortunately, it was on the all the way on the other side of the map, and I make a left turn somewhere, go end up somewhere and I wasn't supposed to go. a load screen that lasts forever. Oh, my God. <laughs> every, way you, every door you enter is a fucking load screen. Every freaking, every block you cross over, it's another loading screen. Oh, man, it used to take me forever. Did you were you uh, the the guy that would knock on every door just to see like where you can go in and where you can't? Yes, absolutely. And I remember they said like, "Oh, this is very a very open world." And I was like, "Well, I'm going to knock on every door until I can go inside." Do you know what I think that game did the best 
and I think that um, the games nowadays <coughs> they really they don't they don't capture the open worldness of Shemnu because Shemnu wasn't a vast plane. It was a tightly condensed area. You had different sections of the map that you could go to, but it was very limited. And I think that the appeal of a game like Shemnu was because it balanced, like you were in a place where you can say, like you go into a, a game like GTA V, there's places in that game that you will probably never get to because it's just so much. But in a game like right. Shemnu, they were good about having every place there, including the arcade, as a part of the story. So your mind kind of sees it like it's, I mean, you had the dynamic weather, it would rain, it would snow, you had different seasons changing, um, and, and the setting, everything was, it was an open world, but it was not. It was kind of like a hybrid of the two. But it was, it was fun to just go out one day without any kind of like mission or whatever, just to walk around and see what everybody else was doing. And it didn't feel like a chore aside from the loading screen, but I think why, why I like that game, I like that game very much, just like Geo. And just, just being able to walk up to somebody like at, the, at the, the, the flower stand and just to talk to them, see what's going on. Because you knew mm. it was a part of the story, but it was, you didn't have to go 50 miles uh, out west to go get something. Like, I think nowadays everything just wants to get really, really big. But I think if they did the same kind of thing with Shemnu in that tightly compact open world it would be a much better appeal because then you can it's more manageable that way you can actually see yourself walking okay i can walk from here to there but in between there instead of making it so big oh they want to talk about oh you can you see that mountain you can go to that mountain i don't want to fucking go to that mountain i want to see what's going on over here like yeah i can yeah. go to see that mountain but what what what's between there and that mountain do i want do i even care about that do i even care about the, the stuff in it but if it's smaller and it's a little bit more compact, I think that's more appealing to the player, especially with players that don't have a lot of time to play video games. Thank you for that, Gio. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Gio. Uh, yeah. You think yep. I yep. knew, I knew that's what you wanted to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what are best friends for? <laughs> so, so what about you, Josh? What's, uh, what's your biggest time sink? Um, I think time sync falls into two categories. I think the first category is a game that you put a lot of hours in for no reason. Mm -hmm. And then there's time syncs that you put a lot of hours in, but you see the results, kind of like a game like Destiny or GTA V, where you can amass money, you can, you can buy property. Um, one of the biggest time syncs that I ever had with a game that ultimately I, I don't even... I regret because it was, it's just so much time spent was... Uh, Guild Wars 2, bought that game when it first came out. It was a digital download on, on the Mac, and I played it, played it, played it, thinking, oh, this is going to be the next World of Warcraft. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into crafting. I'm going to get into spells and all this shit. And at the end of the day, first of all, that made me realize that I don't like massive multiplayer RPGs at all because I don't, I don't fucking care that I have a saddle that has plus five fucking magic. Like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, there's too <laughs> much time spent doing the littlest things like you can oh well you can you can get five leather and you can get seven cloth and you can get a fucking piece of metal you oh i made a belt how about just give me the fucking belt why do i have to make this shit if i want to make a belt <laughs> i will go to the fucking home depot and i will make a goddamn belt i don't want to do that like i can see the appeal for some people but for me the time sink is why do i have to go through all this bullshit just to get a fucking sword yeah you know what I'm saying? Like it's just that to me that's a that's a negative time sink. A positive time sink could be something like I don't know, like Killer Instinct. I keep going back to that game since its release, but I keep getting better at it, and my ra and my rating keeps go going up. Or like a game like Destiny, where new expansion comes out, you can you can you know beat another boss and get better weapons. That's a that's a good time sink because that's something positive. But going somewhere and killing a bunch of fucking goats just to get their milk so you can make a potion like I. Just give me the potion, dude. You know, I, I, that reminds me so much about uh, a guy I was talking to. He was trying to get me to play uh, World of Warcraft. And, and I'll be honest, I've never played World of Warcraft, but he was. I want everybody to meet little Josh. <laughs> hi, beautiful. Say hi. Say hi to the world. Hi. Tell, hey. them, tell them your name. Hi. What's your name? Hi. She says her name is Genevieve. <laughs> oh, oh, so beautiful. You love daddy? Yeah. Can I have a kiss? You want to go back to mommy? 
Okay. Say bye. 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 <laughs> bye bye, baby. That's how you do it. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Big baby daddy cast. Daddy of the year. That's it. <laughs> You got you, you got all the basics covered. I did. Gave I her did. a kiss. You know, she she thought she was uh, interacting. It's just it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Internet star in the making. That's it. I'll bring you guys with me. I won't forget you guys. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe do, but everybody else. You need good. like some special sa- uh, effects behind you right now. <laughs> 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 so the. Uh, Getting back to with the World of Warcraft, I remember my friend was so excited that he was going to be a tanner in the game. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm just gonna make all these leather products." And I'm like, I, "Why are you? Why do you want to be a tanner?" He's like, "Oh, because I'm gonna set my own shop up, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna sell this stuff, and that's that's what I'm gonna do." And so he would go out and just try to get all these zip, all this leather and just try to make armor to sell it to people. And I'm like. Okay, but you know what? Don't, don't don't get it twisted. Like I'm not I'm not knocking the game. Um, it's just it's just not for me. I can see the appeal for people because what's the point of video games to escape? Like let's say yep. your your ultimate escape or your ultimate dream would be to be a leather crafter, and, but you can't do that in real life. But now you have a game that allows you to do that, and you can help people. That that's freaking awesome. I'm not saying those games are bad. All over. I'm just saying they're not for me. Yeah, they don't click with you. They don't resonate. No, no. But some people, I could definitely see how people would just go on a game like that and want to be a potion maker because in their mind, hey, shit, making potions is cool. I can help people. People come to me. People buy shit from me. I could get I could get gold. Like, that, that stuff is cool, but just not for me. You could be, like, yeah. a handy guy, you know? You could just give out handies to everybody while they play. Like, <laughs> who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's that's gonna be for the uh, the big baby daddy cast prime edition. Yes. We'll, we'll discuss that even more. Handies and video games. <laughs> so uh, for me, the biggest time sink uh, I would have to say it has been Morrowind. I probably put more hours than I care to admit for that game. Uh, Morrowind. I, I think I clocked in over four hundred hours, and I had Jesus. beaten the game. I had played all the DLC that they had for it. back then. It was expansion packs, and. Uh, after I was done with the game, I just liked running around just doing random stuff. Like, how can I break this game? And I would just, you know, keep, continue playing. And I remember there was a spell that would let you jump for a thousand feet, but when you landed, you would die. So I remember I would start training um, whatever ability allowed you to just fall for a longer period and then uh, see if I could actually live through that spell. So I spent. A lot of time on that. And then when I figured out how to do the cheat codes, forget it. Man, <laughs> it was ridiculous at that point because you could spawn any any enemy you wanted and whatever, you know, just you know, just do some crazy stuff. So what what is it about that game that you felt that you had a connection to? Like you felt that like I could imagine during that time there were other games, there were other systems. What was it specifically like let's say you went to school or you, you you were doing something and you said, damn, I can't wait till I get home so I can play Marvel. What like what was it for you that made it? Um, to me, I think it was the 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 hoarding mechanic and then the ability to once you figured out how to do the cheat codes, that you can make a spell be a lot stronger than, you know, what the game intended to, and then just kind of see the type of havoc that that would do. Um I, I just think that the game gave you a lot of liberties uh more so than other games would not not even grand theft auto had the amount of freedom that you had in in uh morrow and in terms of uh like where you could go like you know you couldn't swim in grand theft auto 3 which was what i had to compare to at that time um you know even though you were limited to swords and magic and and bows and arrows you know they, they still had plenty of other things to do uh, other than just killing a monster you know, the the fact that you could go like, oh, well, let me go into this cave and see what is in there. You know, that's the first game I ever played that allowed you to do that. Right, right. I think me and Gio has, have the same outlook on this to where, and stop me if I'm wrong, but when the game gives you too much control, when the game gives you too much to do, like, oh, you can go anywhere or you can go. There. I, I am turned off a little bit by that. Like, it has to be a balance. I don't want you to put me on rails and just 
bring me around and start shooting stuff. And I don't want that limited, but I don't want you to give me this vast open world to do whatever it is that you want to do. You could do this. You could not do that. I want a direction. I want a goal. I want an objective. I don't want to, I don't want to just be put in a world. Fallout was kind of guilty of that, but in, in essence, it was like, okay, your kid is stolen. You got to go find your kid. And you just so happen to get things along the way. So sometimes it works, but then other times when they give you just too much liberty or when they give you cheat codes, it kind of breaks the experience for me because I want to immerse myself in the experience. And maybe Gio has something to say about that. Like, I, you give me too, too much control, you tell me to go anywhere. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, there's no clear path. Yeah, because you're going to do, like, you're going to go in one direction for so long. You know, it has, I feel like it has to be to where um, if you're going to go from here, point A to point B, then there has to be something along the way for me to do that's going to be um, important towards the game or has to do with the storyline and, you know, like, just being able to go from here to all the way to fucking Mount Everest for no apparent reasons, just killing time and... Is, it's irrelevant to fucking the game itself. Right. Well, it's funny you guys think like that, and that kind of um, transitions over to what we're going to talk about in the main topic. When I was, uh, I guess, younger and had a lot more time, uh, having the ability to kind of play with the game like if it was a toy, like, you know, kind of make my own story and play around with it, uh, is something that I was more willing to do then, not so much now. I kind of feel the same way you guys do, where I kind of need to have some direction. I want to have a story to follow, and I want the game to end. You know what I mean? I want to feel like I have been able to finish this game, and the story is usually what does that for you. So for the main topic for today, we're going to be talking about games that uh, kids gravitate to now, games like uh, Minecraft. Uh, I think they're considered like an open <laughs> sandbox, uh, toy box type of game, and... Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, how do you feel uh, these games um, have been, you know, have been, you know, how kids interface with these type of games? How do you feel about your kids playing a game like uh, an open sandbox or toy box type of game like Minecraft or Terraria? So I would say back to not, not to not to fall back to what we were saying before. As an adult, games like Minecraft and Terraria, those are time sinks. Because I was never the type of child that would sit there with Legos and build like a spaceship. I would, I would always say, oh, mommy, mommy, give me the, the, the Legos. But I would never build anything of any significance. You know, I would just sit there and be like, 30 minutes in, like, what the fuck? What am I doing? Like, I don't want to play with this anymore. Um, Dad, I'll, can you build it for me? Yeah, can I wanna you play this? I'm going to go play some video games. Uh, but I think it's so great that these games exist for children because it does two things. The first thing that it does, it teaches them creativity. Mm -hmm. It gets their yeah. minds working. It gets them to associate colors and shapes and say, oh, that's a dog. I'm going to make a dog. So now their motor skills are in tune. Everything, every, all the cog cognitive uh, sparks are going off and they're, they're in it. You know what I'm saying? Um, the second thing that it does, it also builds a sense of like accomplishment. It says, look what I did. This, this is something that I made. This is something that I did. I can be proud of what I did. As opposed to going in and saying, okay, well, sit them in front of the TV where they're fucking looking at the, the things and Dora's asking them, do you see? Swiper, no swiping? And they're like, swiper, swiper. Do you see? It's right there. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I think that, that, that sense of accomplishment and then it's so, so important for adults and, and parents to say, even if they made a clay and they made a blob of nothing, oh my goodness, that's so great. You're so creative because that boosts their confidence and that's what's going to lead them on eventually in life. So games like Minecraft, Terraria, uh, and, and even, even little sandbox games like Disney Infinity and Skylanders where they can do whatever they want to do, I think those games are great for children and and even games like Mario Maker where they can actually make their own levels they can do their own thing not so much things like um what was that PlayStation game that did that a little bit planet little big planet that's a little bit too complex but stuff like Minecraft I mean in case you haven't noticed Minecraft is worth like what what a fucking trillion dollars now kids love that that's this age's like fucking Tetris that's this age's uh, uh Legos at this point yeah, I definitely agree. Like, um, I think it definitely gives a child uh, an opportunity for them to put whatever they have in their mind and be able to see it, you know, for themselves and be able to create it and, you know, be able to 
to you know to improve it to way they do, to the way they um, think about it. You know. Um, also, I do think that it's definitely time consuming. You know, my two nephews. Uh, I remember when I used to go over to go visit them, and they used to literally sit there and argue to see who could get on the, on, on the PC so they could keep building their their castle or their underground freaking tunnels and stuff. Um, and and I I've, I've actually tried it one time, and, and I could see why kids and people in general um, are so what's the word like it's like appealing to them yeah because like i was like you know i want to I try to build a castle and then i started trying to build a castle and it's like oh i want to add this i want to add that and the next thing you know you have this humongous thing and it's like wow it actually looks pretty cool and you want to be showing it around to your friends right. and my nephews and stuff and it, it, it's definitely a catchy game um it, it's just something i think you know parents need to really let you know be on them with the kids as far as like just letting them sit there 24 hours a day on a freaking PC trying to, you know, build something, you know, like break it into sections where, you know, they can still be active while they're not just sitting there on the, on the computer all day whenever they have a chance to freaking, you know, build something or, or, or play, the, play the game. I don't know, man. I don't think I agree. I think that's the way of the future. I think I think we keep trying to resist it. I think we keep trying to say... Oh, um, have the kids go out and have the kids do this, have the kids do that. But I think that, I mean, dude, your son does it. My <laughs> daughter does it. And I'm pretty sure Manny's daughter at some point, as much as he's going to probably resist, she's going to do it. My, my daughter could work an iPad better than my grandmother. And that's, that's saying a lot. And it's crazy because I don't want to use the word crazy. It's, it's, it's interesting. Mind bottling. It's mind bottling because <laughs> these games don't appeal to me because as a child, when I grew out of that creative phase, I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to sculpt. I don't know how to play with Play-Doh. I can make a ball. I can make a, a, something that looks like a dog. <laughs> but those games don't appeal to me because that part of my brain has already receded back. And the other parts of my creativity, the reading, the writing, the singing, the, 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 the audio stuff, all that has taken forward. But as a child, you haven't decided what part of your brain is going to be the, the writer. You haven't decided what part of the brain is going to be the creator. So... Because you're dealing with a child with a blank canvas at this point, they can go in there and you can, I mean, 10, 20 years down the line, they could become architects because they started playing Minecraft or they, be, they, could, they could work into logistics or they could work at math problems, things like that. So I think that's very important. But I think because we're adults to go back and, and for us, because I've tried Minecraft and I've dicked around with it for a little bit. I'm just like, all right, well, now what? Because I don't have that creative spark yeah. has long since diminished. But for a child that's in maybe four or five years old, that's like, oh, look, I made a thing. And then you're the adult and says, okay, that's great. What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> those games, I think that's, it's, it's, it's a great, great thing. I think that's, that's, that's where this world is headed. And virtual reality is right around the corner. And I cannot wait to see what they do with that. that, in so, that garden. So, so talking about that, do you think this is where games like Minecraft are going to be going into the future. They, they may integrate it into VR and kind of give oh, you yeah. a more immersed experience whenever you're building and mining. And Because it doesn't necessarily have to be Minecraft, but that, that could be something that works really well with VR just because, you know, you can pinpoint and look around and kind of, you know, the world feels a lot more alive uh, than it is with a controller. Um, yeah, maybe even having, like, where if you're into VR, like having some type of glove to where whatever you're looking at and if you put your hands in front of your face you could actually see them you literally have to bend down to pick stuff up and yeah. you know, stack them up put and stuff up i think that could be definitely um pretty pretty cool it could also be you know the people could also use it for like some type of therapy and stuff like physical yes. therapy exercise um, so it could definitely go in a lot of different directions i think geo's right i think geo's uh like ma almost marrying the two like you marry reality with the digital world and that's that's a I mean, we're on the forefront of that. So you know you have your you have your blank canvas, and instead of this sitting there clicking or using the iPad, you physically have to take a block and put that shit up there and see if they're putting twenty thirty hours into that if they're bending <laughs> up and down. Let's see how much Minecraft they play. Uh, all, all our kids are gonna be built. <laughs> also, second to that, it also creates the ability for more social interaction. Because now, instead of you being in the world by yourself creating, 
What's to say, hey, Gio, what are you doing today? Okay, you want to you wanna come help me? I'm trying to build this moat for my castle. Okay, I'll be right on. You're in? Okay, I'm in? Okay, cool. Listen, I'm down by the river over over the, the mountain. Can you meet me on that side? So he goes, and we meet up. Okay, listen, I need you to grab those blocks and meet me over there. And it's like we're outside building a castle, but yeah. Gio could be on the other side of the planet, but we're right there in the virtual space. I'm so excited for what VR has to come. That's going to be awesome, man. Yeah, I, I think the the best way that I could see this get implemented is uh, especially when it, whenever, you know, architects, whenever they have to do a mock-up, they have to kind of show you how it's going to look. I think this would be a great way for uh, for people to say, hey, I want to show you what I'm thinking about doing in here. Uh, put your headset on. We've already taken a, a scan of the area, um, and this is what I'm thinking. And then you load whatever you did on your on your you know, VR, and then show them, like, oh, yeah, uh, we want to put this. What's going on? What's going on? You got something? You got something to say? You got something to say? You know, you know what's really fun? You know what's really fun? Go, going to Ikea and getting the Ikea box, right? And then putting it together and then realizing that you put the fucking wrong thing on the wrong side. And then you have a thing that looks like this, but it's supposed to look like this. And then you got to take the whole thing over. You got to take it out because they don't give you instructions. It just says the stupid guy's like... You should do this with two people. <laughs> no, it's only me. What, and you're talking to a piece of paper. But to reiterate what you were saying, what if you could build the stupid IKEA thing before you build it, so yeah. that you don't make yeah. that mistake? Yeah. So you don't have to. It's a lot easier to visualize because it's funny. My wife tells me all the time, "Well, can't you visualize it?" I was like, "Man, man, I I can't. Uh, I really need it, need you to." sit down and put it on pen and paper because I have no clue what you're talking about. It's like, oh, yeah, we put this color in here and then this over there. And I'm like, I can't see it. I'd be the worst guy like doing interior design because I can't see anything. Or even <laughs> even for even for other applications, for example, let's say you're one of the pe type of people that just don't do well on interviews. You make an app for somebody that's going to be, hey, I'm the guy that's going to say, okay, so what can you do for this company? And then it'll rate you based on your eye contact. It'll rate you based on the answers to the questions, how much your body, calls, language. Your body language, how many times you say, uh, uh, things like that. Like, there's so many different things in my head. And Microsoft, come on. I just <laughs> said, uh, uh, copyright the game in yeah. It works something out. <laughs> but like we said before, with the with the VR stuff, you capture a moment with a loved one that has since passed, and when you're feeling depressed and you're down about it, and you know, you're on the verge of being in that place that you don't want to be in, just put that thing on, and and now all of a sudden you're at the baseball game with your dad who has since passed away, uh, and you want to relive that moment because that's probably the only thing that's gonna you know help you get through the day. So. Yeah, that's uh, I, I, now now we kind of moved on from the way the kids view it now and how they're using it for their creativity and how we could implement this for in VR in the future for us adults because we're still never gonna go back and, and be creative on Minecraft again unless they make it a lot more accessible uh, for us with something like VR. Well, what if I, what if you're overseas and your daughter's playing Minecraft? And you're you're fighting a war, and you you know you got one headset for like 50 guys in your squad. It's your turn. You get an hour. You put the VR headset on. Now you're in Minecraft with your daughter, and you're building something together. Yeah, that's that's, that's different. That's Just different. my brain has all these <laughs> ideas. <laughs> copyright, copyright the gamermind.com. Copyright, copyright the gamermind.com. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think that would be a good way for you to for interact with your kid um, and kind of, you know, definitely spend that time with them and feel like you're there with them, even though you look like a blocky mess. But, you know, it's still for the kids that haven't seen something different and that is the new normal. Uh, that would be great for them, too. That's like, oh, I spent time with that, even though if you're not there, I think that yeah. would be, you know, th this is the new normal. Not not so much for us, but it is for them. So that definitely that, that definitely helps the situation, the fact that this is the world they live in and uh, they didn't get to see what we saw and how we got there and how our expectation to see um, our social interactions is a lot different for us than it is for them. Like, my grandmother cannot stand watching pictures on a phone. She's like, you got to print this out for me. I, I need to have a book and see it. Yet, 
you know, for me, I have a bunch of digital albums. I was like, why am I going to print that shit out? You know, it's, just, it's already there. It just costs you know, money. You, <laughs> you save <your> money. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, even, even with us, like, well, like, I still don't know the proper term to tell people to, to capture something on a video camera. I always say videotape it. Oh, can you tape that? Oh, the baby's doing something. Videotape it. Like, if I were to tell that to, like, an 11-year-old, I'd be like, what the fuck is a videotape? You know, <laughs> uh, but that's what whenever I take my iPhone out. Oh, the baby's doing something. She says something. Oh, videotape that. Videotape? Like we haven't used fucking VHSs in like fifteen years. You know. <laughs> the, the, uh, your daughter's like, oh, daddy's saying those crazy words again. Crazy daddy. <laughs> it's so silly. A special drink that I can never drink. <laughs> uh, only until you're twenty-one. Um, do you think do 30. you think games uh, 30 <laughs> 45 <laughs> just, just round it off 50 <laughs> <laughs> do you think uh, do you think games like this would ever move to a you know they're so kids play it for so long and they spend so many so many hours on it do you think this would ever go into a pay to play uh, type of marketing um, or type of game as opposed to how they have it now where you buy the game and you just, this is the content you get. Do you think this is something companies would ever do in the future uh, to try to just get more money? Like, for example, in Minecraft, they're like, oh, you can't access these blocks or uh, like the logic blocks or the programming blocks until you pay extra, you know what I mean? And then sell it to you by pieces. Yeah, I'm you sure. think well, I, they got some DLC content, but I don't foresee them really doing that because they want to draw in more and more people. Well, you know, you know more but, kids. But we're talking about the future where kids are going yeah. to be exposed to this type of marketing more and more. Do you think this is something that they could actually, like, if they start introducing it and kids are like, oh, daddy, daddy, can I get the iPad password so I can, you know, get this? And you're like, whatever, yeah, yeah. You know, and they, and they get something. That's, some, that's something that's really normal for kids now, the, the fact that they have to pay more to get additional content. Well, think like. about it this way. Legos are not just Legos anymore. You have Lego Star Wars. You have... Lego Spider-Man, you have Lego Frozen. So the base content, if we're talking about it in that context, would be just the regular basic ass Legos, the yellow, the blue, whatever. But if you want to get the Legos that are frozen, that have the sparkly colors for snow or the, the uh, Elsa or Anna model, then you would have to pay extra for that. So I don't think that they're doing necessarily anything wrong in that regard. Uh, to pay to play, I mean, it's basically up to the up to the individual. You don't have to buy that stuff. Yeah, it, exactly. it, they're not forcing you to do it. Um, it I think I think they're going to maintain the base game as a free to play, and then if you want to add stuff like different skins or different logic blocks, then that's something that you would need to pay for because you would have to do the same thing if you would play, pay for something like a Lego. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I think one of our next topics that we should talk about is uh, possibly. How is it that we control our kids uh, when it comes to for them to actually paying for more content? Because they they're used to getting a game and entertainment for free, and then you know a, a little message pops up and it's like, oh, if you want to have extra life, or continue playing now instead of waiting five minutes for the next life, uh, you can pay an extra dollar. You know how do you how do you guys I can solve that, that real quick? <laughs> Make them get the fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> you want that? Get a job. Do chores around the house. <laughs> Shoot. No, no. Chores, you don't pay kids to do chores. I'm sorry. Chores are chores. I grew up doing chores. I didn't get paid. I'm That's sure Josh had chores. He you know didn't do them, paid? and he didn't get you paid. You got paid by staying alive. They fed you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm here right now. That's my payment. I think we got to start looking things in the digital sense as more like when we were growing up. When I was growing up, my thing was Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. Every fucking time I saw the commercial, I wanted the next Power Ranger or I wanted the next Ninja Turtle. And what happened? I got the Power Ranger. But then what happened? They came out with another one. So mm -hmm. I would see the commercial and I would say, Dad, 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 can I have the Power Ranger? And they'd be like, do your chores or do better in school. Or if you get good grades, you'll get this. I think we have to, as parents, we have to use that same logic because nothing is different, really. It's just, it's just the, the avenue in which the content is coming in. It's coming in digitally. It, but but you got to admit, it's a lot easier for them to get access to it, for them to go say like, oh, yeah. And then you don't realize that it's just a dollar. So you, you know, honestly, the way the entertainment has <laughs> uh, has kind of evolved today, they've kind of devalued 
uh, how entertainment works because they give you something for free, so you have an expectation to be entertained for free, and then they like the Ninja they Turtles add cartoon <laughs> that was for free. Yeah, they provided the, you the content for free, and if you wanted to enjoy the content even further, you can get the action figures. I wouldn't say the the TV was free, but well, if you were in my house, it was. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. <laughs> you ever heard of yeah. a two-way splitter? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, man, suddenly like I have no no more uh, television uh, signal, and then suddenly I get it again, but it's a little bit grainier. I wonder yeah. what happened. <laughs> and you see like uh, your dad walking out with all the tools. <laughs> <laughs> like, when the fuck did you become a cable guy, man? <laughs> Why are we on the roof? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't tell your teachers. <laughs> man. All right, all right. This was a good discussion for uh, for Minecraft and for games that are open sandbox. Um, I wanted to move on to our next section and kind of talk about and, and plug in our, our uh, the new content from the website. Uh, the latest things that we've got, we've got uh, two sections that we uh, named as Daddy's Favorites, where we go around and like show you guys what are our favorite sections in the game uh, or a particular section in the game. And then we've got Daddy Knows Best, and this came from... Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, this came from me just kind of listening in uh, on a show from GameScoop. Uh, I'm plugging GameScoop right now. And uh, I had a daddy, uh, like, you know, a daddy sent in a, an email to them asking for them to kind of give feedback as they review games. Uh, but in the point of view of a father where they don't have a lot of time, uh, for example, what we were talking about today, uh, time sinks. They don't have a lot of time to play a time sink game. Um, so could they actually make a recommendation on a game that actually uses your time adequately? So we've taken the shore uh, for us to, you know, games that we're playing right now, kind of do a video on it and let you know whether this is a game that as a father, uh, is this using my time well? And this is something that we would recommend to other dads. So uh, check out our website at Daddy's Favorites and uh, Daddy Knows Best at thegamerman.com. Uh, so the last uh, episode that we did for Daddy's favorite is uh, Final Fight Round Two, uh, and this is from Geo. So, Geo, tell us a little bit about uh, the favorite section of, uh, of Final Fight that you were recording. Well, let me just say, Final Fight is probably like one of my favorite, like um, kind of like old school fighting games where you just like move from left to right and you have to get to the end of the level and kick you know people's asses and shit like that. Um, it, Typical it's funny Geo. Not too long ago, um, I had took I had to take my son to uh, to the rec uh, recreation center, and they have a little arcade room, and they have this one arcade that has like fucking like a hundred different uh, like best arcade games, and that was actually one of them. I spent no lie like three hours in there. Um, I didn't let the other kids play; it was only for kids. And I was like, "Yeah, no, you better go play something else over there. Go play with the pool table or something." And I stood there literally until I beat the game. Because if it was one of those that had the quarters, like, I would have lost all the money in my wallet because I was not going to give up until I finally beat that game. And I actually finally beat it, and I was so proud of myself. Nice. I walked out there with my chest out, my chin <laughs> up, like, yeah, say something. I bet you can't do that to a little <laughs> nine-year-old kid. <laughs> but it, it's a really fun game. Um, you could definitely get really mad at the game because it's like it takes you ten times. You got to hit somebody to kill them, and then they hit you three times, and you're dead. And it's like, Why? Why are you so slow? Why are you so fast? Like, <laughs> come on, stop hitting me with the sword. You're cheesing. Stop cheesing. That's my favorite word. I hate that word, cheesing, but yeah, I hate when I lose. <laughs> but it's fun. Check it out. Um, who knows? Maybe you'll like it. All right. And uh, what's uh? I think Josh, you did another video from uh, Mario. Uh, what was that about? Yeah, that, about that was uh, that was one of my favorite uh, gaming moments. Basically, <laughs> I, I don't know if I conveyed it too much too well in the video, but check out the video anyway. It's pretty good. Um, basically, I was a little kid and I was playing Mario for the first time, and I was dicking around with with uh, the second level in the game when you're underground, and I realized that you can break break blocks when you're Big Mario. So I just started going going crazy, breaking blocks all over the place, and I figured out a way that I can actually break the blocks that are up on top, jump up there, and then ride it to the end of the level, and then get to a warp zone. And that I think was like the oh shit moment. Like I've never been able to do anything this, like else. It was it was like one of those moments where I thought I actually did something that I wasn't supposed to do. You know, <laughs> like I was like, what? You thought you were gonna get spanked by Mario? Yeah, like I was like, why am I here? Whatever. And then 
can I do this? Can I do this? Am I breaking the game? <laughs> so that was one of my favorite, like as earliest as I can remember, <laughs> favorite moments. And the video is up on the site. It's on the daddy's favorites. And check it out. I mean, if, like I said in the video, if you have any favorite moments that you want to plug, that you want us, maybe maybe you want us to do for you and, and put them up on the site, let us know. We'll, we'll take a look at it because, uh, you know, we I, that, that's what keeps us going as gamers is remembering those little tidbits of moments or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if you have a favorite gaming moment and you want us to do some commentary on it, then let us know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get that up for you. So the, the next section that we built was uh, Daddy Knows Best. Um, I think uh, this is... Very, uh, you know, very near and dear to me because I feel that uh, there's a lot of games out there that can really waste our times. You know, and it all depends on the type of gamer that we are. Um, but I feel that, you know, there are games that will make use of our time a lot better. And, and, and it goes a lot into the game design of the game. The fact that, you know, we could just give you this, but instead we're going to make you work even harder for it. Um, and there's a lot of games that do that. And, and, and it kind of bothers me. Like, I remember Grand Theft Auto 4 was just a game that a lot of the main missions felt like side missions. And you're like, why am I driving this guy? Like, uh, God damn it. You know, why are you making me do this? So there are, you know, obviously Grand Theft Auto 5 did a much better job of that. And they learned from Red Dead Redemption. So, you know, this is the type of thing that we're looking at. And the first video that we did was Tharsis. Josh. Do you want to tell? Do you want to tell me about Tharsis? Uh, I'm so tired of this damn game. Um, Tharsis, <laughs> Tharsis, you, you have you have a better chance of beating Tharsis than you have of going outside during a storm and trying to dodge rain, because <laughs> it's all based on a random number generator. You might as well just play a fucking board game at that point. Like the majority of what we talk about is in the video, and please, please, please check out the video. It's a great video. Me and Manny do some commentary over it. Um, but the game is, it's not a bad game until you realize that you have no control over the outcome whatsoever. So you can plan your game as best as possible, but you're, you're a slave to the random number generator in the form of dice. That's all I'm going to say about that game. I've since beaten it. I've beaten it one time, and I will never touch that game again. However, I do recommend it for people because... It's a different spin on a turn-based strategy, and I think that if they take what they have and they tighten it up a bit to where the, the dice don't control so much as the outcome as it does now, then it could be a, a step in the right direction for turn-based strategy games. Okay. Uh, I looked, at, I looked at, the, at you playing this game. I honestly felt like the, the, the gameplay as I was looking at it was just not enjoyable for me. It is a good turn-based strategy idea, um, and especially now that you've got movies like The Martian and Gravity that have this whole thing about, you know, being stuck in space and, you know, trying to survive. I think that the, the idea of the game is great, but there was nothing that I was seeing that I would just enjoy. It just seems like a stressful mess. And it was it, it would be to me if I hate a game that just does not give me any control whatsoever of like, hey, you know, I've, I've done all this planning and then suddenly here's like some random uh, some random thing that's gonna happen um, that could have uh, could not happen, but you kind of feel like you're beating the game because you got lucky right. instead of actually Absolutely. putting some. And, and I can't stand that. I can't. You know that that just seems like something that if I play it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be mad at it, and it's not gonna be what I'm looking for whenever I'm playing. Um, the next game that we actually reviewed was uh, Chivalry: Medieval Warfare, and uh, that was a. Uh, that was an interesting game in the sense that, hey, it's a great idea. You know, there's games like For Honor that are coming out um, that seem like a good idea. So I'm like, oh, okay, let, let me try it out. And then I tried it. And oh my God, it is so bad for me, at least. My experience with it was just, you know, there there is no real single player. It's just you playing against bots. And I don't know if you guys saw the gameplay. Gio, did you look at the video? I'm going to look at it after this, after seeing Josh <laughs> like this the whole time. 
What, what about you, Mr. Sims? Have, have you? Uh, no, I saw the. No, I saw you guys post it up, but I haven't taken a look at it with everything that's been Welcome going on. Welcome to the Gamer Mind, where the people that work for the Gamer Mind don't actually. Look at the game. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I, I don't give a shit about your crappy video, Manny. What is it called? Chivalry? What? I don't even know how to spell chivalry. What is a chivalry? What is that? That game uh, sucks. I'd rather go to fucking Medieval Times and fucking just... I'd rather go to Medieval Times and it be canceled than play chivalry. <laughs> like, you show up to Medieval Times, get ready to fucking eat that chicken without no damn fork, and then be like, oh, Medieval Times is in here, and I'm like, oh, okay. I would rather do that than play chivalry. <laughs> I uh, I wouldn't recommend this to a friend uh, to because it, it's enemy? just <laughs> maybe to my maybe to my worst enemy I would recommend them like, to play hey, this game. Hey, I have this nice game. You want to play? <laughs> <laughs> but but to me it was not an enjoyable experience. It felt a lot uh, you know very unbalanced. There's a lot of lag, and it's true. I live in a small town, but I I do have. Uh, 24 megabytes of download and when I was trying to be the archer and the people were just like jumping all over the place I was like okay this is this, this is not working this is like being a sniper in like uh, modern warfare and the lag being so bad that you can't even line up a shot no no and what was interesting was that okay if you use a guy that's a little bit faster your hits do not compare to the guy that has the double edged sword or has the axe and every time they hit you it's like your life goes from here to here, and then you're hitting them, and it's like, dunk, dunk. And I was like, this is this is not going to work. Like, it's true, the guy is slower, but that is completely unbalanced. That You can't, you know, a stab is a stab. You know what I mean? Like, no matter how big or your sword is, it's still, you're going to go through. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it was... Size doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, but but yeah, that's uh, that's our newest content. Uh, Josh gave it a thumbs down on the website, I, and so did Manny. Um, I hope that whenever Geo and Joshua Sims actually look at the content, they can say something about it. But um, they're busy working on their projects, right, Geo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I have this huge project I'm working on. My boss is down my neck about it. You know, it's just, <laughs> <sighs> so stressful. But but yeah. Um, if you if yeah you guys like please come see our website check out our newest content for uh, Daddy Knows Best and Daddy's Favorites and we'll be we'll be updating those uh, regularly. Um, I want to move on to the news. Uh, there's a couple of interesting news this week. Um, I don't know if you guys know uh, about Mad Cats. Have you guys ever heard about that brand? That was the yeah. controller that I gave to people when they came over to my house to play video games. <laughs> 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 You're right. You're right. It's like you're not gonna play my first party. Uh, uh, my my uh, Sony. You're not gonna play with my Xbox controller. You're gonna play with my. <laughs> you're gonna have the fucking controller uh, that has like mine of eight own. fucking buttons on it that do <laughs> random shit and it's not even shaped like the controller is supposed to be shaped and <laughs> it's see through and it's glow in the dark. Yep. Yep. That's that's <laughs> that's Mad Cats for you. So their shares are plummeting, and this, this is after the CEOs and other executives left the company. And uh, what do you what do you think this is going to do for gaming peripherals? Because I know that they they haven't really cornered the market. There are other companies that do this, but they used to do a lot of custom skins for the controllers, and they used to do like their own versions of like, oh, here's a Street Fighter joystick controller. Did you guys like? Do you feel like this is going to have any effect at all at gaming? No. No, no because no. their controllers were shit. <laughs> you know, I mean... There's so many different that, companies out there doing it. the same thing. Exactly. So. This is this is the newest section of Daddy Knows Best, why Matt Cass controllers are shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I think is the biggest contributor is people don't go out anymore with their with their consoles. Oh. You used to yep. go out and you used to go to different places and you needed an extra controller. Somebody always needed an extra controller because you had that one guy that wanted to play and you needed it. So you got a Mad Cat. You didn't want to get the regular base controller because, number one, I don't think they really sold it. And number two, they were always more expensive. The, yeah, right. the, 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 mm -hmm. the more expensive controller was always the one that came with the system. But the Mad Cat controller was like at least $15, $20 cheaper. So you would get that. But people don't go out anymore. You know, I don't I have an extra controller. I don't even know why because nobody comes over to play. 
But a lot of the games now... I'll be right there, buddy. Yeah. They're multiplayer, but they're multiplayer online multiplayer. They're not like couch yeah. co-op. So That's they right. Everybody need, already has their own control. Right. They yeah. needed to shift their, their, their focus on other things, and I don't think they came up with an answer to that question. That's why the sales are plummeting. Nobody's buying extra controls anymore. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the, uh, the only MacCast controller I ever had never really worked right. The buttons always felt weird. Remember how whenever the PlayStation 2 came, it had like the, the pressure on the, uh, on the buttons. And I remember I bought a MacCast controller and it had unpressed and then depressed. It was only two. And I was like, what happens to all these games that have like that pressure sensitive? Like you either did a, a soft punch or a hard punch. Uh, depending on how you crouch. press it. Yeah, and then you always just did a hard punch whenever you were with the... Uh, <laughs> the and magnet. you know what? It was it was all cool when, when the they were um, analog, but now everything is wireless, and that costs a lot of money. Because who the fuck wants an Xbox One wireless controller? I mean, who the fuck wants an Xbox One wired controller? And where the hell did, you, did Geo go? He dipped out. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. They have a couple nice looking wire controllers and I'm just like shit cause uh, we were in the store the, just the other day and we were like oh look they got a Star Wars controller oh hey look they got like some awesome skin controller I'm like shit she goes what it's wired <laughs> no. like, who, who, who would want something like that no I, cause I, well, I just showed you like before we started how far I am from the TV. I would have to sit on a floor to play the damn thing, right, like right. a kid, like a, like a <laughs> like back, in a, back in the back in the regular NES days <laughs> <laughs> with his mouth open, just staring up at the TV. Go go! <laughs> but as far as video games concerned, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shed a tear for Mad Cats. I mean, no. they didn't innovate, so <laughs> too bad, so sad. And they always kind of putting out the same product anyway. They didn't even really yeah. bother to come out with nothing new. Yeah, that's that. I think I think you guys are hitting on the mark with what, why Mad Cats is not doing good. Um, the next news I got is that XCOM Two came out. Uh, there's a couple of reviews on it. Metacritic score right now, as it stands, is 91. Uh, did you guys ever play the first one? And are you interested in playing XCOM Two? I played XCOM One but I never beat it, and um, I'm interested in it because it's a game like kind of like Massive Chalice. Um, I know you guys probably don't know what Massive Chalice is, but it's basically a turn-based It's a turn -based strategy game. I, I happen to kind of like those in my, in my later years. I never liked them when I was younger, but uh, that game is extremely hard, XCOM 1, but it's really cool. It has a cool premise, and um, I might check it out, but I think I might have to beat XCOM 1 before I, I, I hit to XCOM 2. Do, do, now, you think, do you think it's like a story thing for you, or is it just you want to finish XCOM 1? I, I, I like the game mechanic more than the story. I couldn't tell you what. The only thing that, that I know about is the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything more about it, but I like the gameplay. Like, I like the fact that you get to choose your loadout. You get to choose your people. You go in. It's tile-based. Each person has a specific amount of tiles that they can move uh, in, in a turn. If you move too far, then you can't make an attack, but if you move just a little bit uh, uh, shorter than that, then you can move and then make an attack. And it's kind of like, it's, it's basically a board game at that point. Um, yeah. I like the animations, I like the premise, and I like that, that type of gameplay uh, resonates with me. So I think I will definitely check it out. And I'm glad that it's doing well because that's a good studio and they, they put out good content. Yeah, that's for Axis Studios, right? That's, that's for Axis. Pirates, and they do good, they do good games. Yeah. What do you got to say? What's, what's going on? Now they, have, now, they only have, it's only released for uh, PC, correct? Yes. Yep. Right yeah, because right now, yeah, cause did they ever release the first one for a console? I'm not, I'm not sure. I've yeah. heard of it. I just yeah, never I played 360. it. 360. Yeah, it was yeah, 360. 360. Yeah, 360. Yeah. And PlayStation Three, that by the way, that exists. That that is a thing. <laughs> not not in this world. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> oh, that was but fucked up. It, I apologize. Actually... I will never say that thing, anything like that again. <laughs> <laughs> not Japan. <laughs> For our fans around the world, we're sorry. Um, but no, Ohio if it actually Gosai comes Mas. out for the console, <laughs> if it actually comes out for the console, I'll probably get it. Because yeah. I actually I pulled it up a little while ago when um, I saw it, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I pulled up, and I saw the trailer for it. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. Those games are not that bad to play on a controller. No. It's, it's not that no. bad. It's easier to play with a mouse and keyboard, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's all right. 
to that. But 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 for Axis games in general, kind of transition pretty well to consoles. Because I remember when Pirates came to uh, the the PC, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Um, and then they brought it. I think it was for uh, the the PSP. I think had like a version of it, and it worked okay. Uh, the graphics, it worked good, but the graphics were just not not there. But but the gameplay was good, and the gameplay was solid, and I like that. So the next one that I've got, we've got Assassin's Creed. There's a movie that's going to be coming out for Assassin's Creed, and uh, the they interviewed a star, star fastbender, and uh, he was saying that the movie is you know kind of takes a little bit of inspiration from the Matrix. You know, you sit down, you plug in, go into this digital world, but it's actually in the, the past. Animus. Yeah, the Animus. And so, are you guys excited about the Assassin's Creed movie? Like, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on it? I was never really big into the game. It had a good premise, but then it just kept it just kept repeating after a while. But I, I don't know. I just hope they don't do it like how they did with another video uh, movie based video off a of video game that I, we all know. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a video game movie. <laughs> Resident Evil. No, it no. didn't follow anything from the from the from the, from the video game. Part one uh, did. No, it didn't. It part one did. Yes. Part one did. She wasn't yeah. in a mansion. She was. It was in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Oh no! Actually, yeah, she was. Yeah. Don't don't, don't yeah, make excuses in a mansion. for this game. Yeah. <clears throat> it was underground. Remember? Okay. Yeah. Remember the train was underneath the ground, and then. Granted, you know, yeah, true. They didn't focus too much on a mansion. Right. But it was actually the hive was underneath the ground. Yeah. But like, do you? Everything else after that, pretty much, yeah. just kind of like it, it went off. Plus, Michelle Rodriguez died, and like, fuck that. No, 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 no. I want to, I want to touch on that. I was just about to talk about that. Michelle Rodriguez, man. Every movie she's in, she dies, and it's so funny because they brought her back and and the Fast and the Furious, and I thought they were gonna kill her again because you know people just love killing Michelle Rodriguez, <laughs> <laughs> and and when I, you know, she died in Avatar, she dies in every movie. So in Resident she, Evil, she the survives funniest, in um Battle of Blood Rain. She survived in Blood Rain too. Oh yeah, that, true, true. But you know, this is you know, Resident Evil came before this. So I, my context when I was talking about this uh, with my wife was like, damn, like she died in Avatar and Resident Evil. In Resident Evil, the first one, they wanted to kill her so bad that they killed her. She turned into a zombie and they killed her again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, she just does. She and then when they killed her in in the Fast and the Furious, I was like, God damn it, these guys like shit. <laughs> well, 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 wouldn't she's guys, gonna die in the next one? <laughs> wouldn't you guys like to see like Resident Evil? No, no, SWAT Michelle Rodriguez and uh, the Avengers Scarlett Johansson like have a pillow fight or something? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. I was just. Just a random thought. I'm sorry. The feathers. <laughs> yeah. We'll contact them. That'll be a that'll be a conversation. In the rain. The CT shirts. That'll be that that'll be a uh, a the game of right prime now. prime content. Wait, we we have to balance this for the mommies. So it's like let's get like Ricky Martin and Vin Diesel. Know, Vin Diesel to have a. A mud uh, fight. A mud fight. <laughs> yeah. That's an idea for the VR. Out. <laughs> oh yeah, we could do that. Me and Gio are having a mud fight. Uh uh, the gamermon.com copyright. There we oh, go. Copyright Game on. <laughs> Scarlet, call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh so the Gio, do we have any emails this week? Yeah, we have one email. Uh it's gonna be from Kimberly from New Jersey. New Jersey. Kimberly she, from uh, New Jersey. Kimberly from New Jersey. Jersey. From New Jersey. Uh, Jersey. Steak. Cheese steak? Wait, that's Philly, dude. Yeah. What does Jersey have? It's just states right, damn it. Fist pump. <laughs> Jersey Shore. Steel cars. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, she asks, um, if we could be a, a video game character, which character would you want to be? I would be a brown-haired uh, white guy with dark eyes no it has to be a legit like somebody that, that somebody already <laughs> created like a, a video game that you like or uh so uh, i'm describing uncharted i'm describing um nathan drake nathan yeah uh, uh, i'm describing every every single <laughs> Elvis. video game character out there <laughs> <laughs> one for the money two for the show all right don't you're gonna get him you get up and start dancing uh-huh. now. <laughs> Next episode, Next he's going to be all bald. Be all bald. <laughs> <laughs> when I 
Oh, you uh, man. Hair thing. Oh, okay. Oh, just put it back on, dude. You ruined it. That's going on the internet. Does this look super clean? No, who's that? Uh, vanilla, ice. vanilla Ice. Oh, God. <laughs> ninja. 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 Rap. Ninja. 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 Rap. You're going to break your go, stuff there. Go. 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 Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. Yeah. 80s yeah, babies. 80s babies. You know what I'm talking about. 90s. 90s. Oh, nine, yeah. Was it 90s? Oh, shit. So, Josh, what's, uh, what's, which, uh, which character, which would, character would, you would, you would you be? Master Chief. Master Chief. Master Chief Spartan 117. So, that means that he took deals. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's alright. Right. Somebody better. Somebody better. But, okay. But so we, we, apologize we apologize for the feedback. For the feedback. Somebody is somebody is doing major doing feedback. Major feedback. Um, um, uh, Jay, uh, Jay, Jay, my you meeting, my your mic? meeting your mic. Testing, testing. That's it was Jay. Okay. Good so job, guy. We'll start this over again. Um, not not the podcast. We'll start. So so Manny's gonna Manny's be, gonna be. Manny's gonna, <laughs> Manny's gonna be Nathan Drake or an adventure hero. Geo is gonna be. I am going to be Mario. You're gonna be Mario? I'll be Mario. Why are you gonna be Mario? I out of my mouth. I wait, 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 what? <laughs> spit fi- fireballs. He doesn't spit fire. He doesn't he spit does. fireballs. Who are you? <laughs> he picked throws up it. Well it, looks, well, it looks like he's taking it out of his mouth and throwing it. I'm sorry. How would that even work? He's not a dragon. <laughs> I don't know. Axe is game developer. Yeah, he, he's going to say Mario doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Manny. Go, man, and talk. Okay, so. <laughs> so, Gio so wants to be fucking fireball spitting Mario, apparently. Yeah. Yes. Now, Josh, unmute yourself. Yes. Unmute yourself. Who would you like to be? Who would you like to be? Oh God! Yeah. To tell you the truth, I've never even thought about it like that. Well, think about it now. Uh, think about it now. Do, 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 do. Uh, hell, I don't know. Shit, I, I maybe Darth Maul from like Star Wars when the, you know the game from that. Uh, that's somebody. That, damn white people in Star Okay, mute my exactly. mute my. <laughs> <laughs> You, you taking notes? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be the Master Chief. Definitely. Without a doubt. Fucking hero. Saves the world. He's a fucking walking tank. He can, he can fucking do stuff with things. Sorry, I'll still slash you in half with my lightsaber. How about that? Not if I have an energy sword. <laughs> and the overshield. And the overshield. And a rocket launcher. Rocket launcher. <laughs> So, Gio, how can people contact us if they want to send us an email? Wait, does, is, that, is wanna, that for the emails? Sorry about what? that. I just broke my headset. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to contact us, you guys are more than welcome to send us an email at thegamermind at... Scratch that. <laughs> it is going to be <laughs> the daddycast at thegamermind.com. What's that again? Daddycast at thegamermind.com. What you said? Objectives. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, also check out our Twitter page is at the Game Remind underscore. Um, also our Instagram. Um, we're always posting stuff on um, Twitter and Instagram, so check it out um, at the Game Remind underscore as well. Um, and if you guys have any questions, emails, concerns, questions, I said questions already, <laughs> but just to emphasize, questions. If you guys have any questions, questions, please email us. Email us or, or, a comment. All right. All right, guys, that is episode 11. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening, guys. Uh, take care and keep gaming. Peace.